Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, which has just arrived on UK cinemas, is the sequel to the notorious slasher horror from director Reese Frake Waterfield, which was released last year shortly after the copyright for A.A. Milne's original book expired, and quickly gained a cult audience in a similar capacity as The Room or Troll 2. This movie though is a significant improvement, with Frake Waterfield having been granted a much bigger budget to play around with on the back of the first film's financial success, which the director has used to create a much gorier and more technically ambitious follow-up that actually explores its ridiculous premise more. It picks up shortly after Christopher Robin, played by Scott Chambers, has survived the murderous rampage of his former friends from the Hundred Acre Wood, who became feral and vengeful after being abandoned, but he's become a local pariah after he is blamed for the murders. Meanwhile, the actual murderers, consisting of not just Winnie the Pooh, but also Piglet, Tigger and Owl, make plans to bring the carnage to Chris's hometown in Ashdown, where Chris dives deeper into a personal trauma that might just tie into the not-so-silly old bear himself. You can immediately notice the enormous leap in budget as soon as you see the more detailed prosthetics used to create Pooh and his friends, as opposed to the cheap face masks they used in the first film, which is retconned here as a film made within this universe, as well as in a number of larger set pieces like Pooh and Tigger slaughtering their way through a rave, where people are slashed left and right, and sometimes having their heads ripped off by a bear trap, Pooh's weapon of choice incidentally. And the acting is a lot stronger here too, particularly Scott Chambers, who is very likeable as Christopher Robin, which makes up for other characters being stock slasher movie types. The in-universe lore surrounding Pooh and Friends is also given more attention, with Frank Waterfield and co-writer Matt Leslie giving them a backstory not unlike the one in Five Nights at Freddy's. And by the way, this movie is far more entertaining than the actual Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And although it is often cluttered by lengthy exposition, it never loses sight of what kind of movie it actually is, and is at least having fun with this wild premise much more than before, as well as with the fact that there is a much wider universe involving horror versions of characters like Pinocchio, Peter Pan and Bambi, which will eventually lead to an Avengers style crossover event. Is it art? Hell no, but while Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 is as trashy as its predecessor, it is a lot more fun to sit through, so I'll give it a 3 star rating that's as sweet as honey. Be sure to visit the Film Feeder website to read my full review for Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, but for now, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe for more reviews, and I'll see you next time.